I'm Ashley from Of Fiction and Fantasy on Instagram or Ashley's Reads on Twitter. And today I am here to tell you about my November TBR list, which is for the Clear Your Shit Readathon on Twitter. You're probably wondering, this is a November TBR and I am dressed in a cape. <laughs> so you've really got like the nice autumn soft vibes, like soft and cozy November behind me, but then I'm still here stuck on Halloween because it's the 31st. So this is my Halloween costume, despite the fact that this is a November TBR, so just ignore that. But it is based on a fictional character. I did my costume inspired by, I thought it was Man in Blackbeak, but I've heard other people pronounce it Manon Blackbeak, so I can only spell and not pronounce. Uh, you guys will have to tell me which one the correct pronunciation is. But she is from Throne of Glass, and she is one of my favorite characters from that series. And she is a book character, and I need this costume for later, so I figured why not wear it for the vlog tonight. But anyways, let's get on to the books. This month, as I mentioned previously, I am taking part in the Clear Your Shit Readathon, which is being hosted on Twitter by Mouse and L, I believe. I will link both of their Twitters below. This has, I believe, 24 prompts, and all of these prompts are through November and December, which is perfect because I'm planning on possibly not reading almost anything in November and on reading possibly a lot in December with traveling. Normally, I get a lot of reading done at my parents' house if I get to go there this winter. This readathon is based on a challenge. It kind of reminds me of like a D&D type style. You make your own character, you name this character, and then you give yourself the strength and a weakness chosen from the abilities and um, <laughs> lack thereof that this character narrator gives you. The narrator says that an old wizard has requested them to get your help to help the kingdom of Shelfla because a few weeks ago books just started falling from the sky and are harming or killing the residents of Shelfla. So we are a lowly peasant who are going to read these books in order to help the citizens or pe other peasants of Shelfla to survive by clearing our TBR list. This challenge is supposed to be books that you own so for the most part, I will be doing this. It will be my first TBR where you can see most of my books without the little pop-up over there, there, oh, somewhere over here. And I am making a few exceptions though. If it is a series that I am currently reading, I want to clear that. I have almost an entire page on a college ruled sheet of paper of series that I am currently in the middle of. So if that fit the prompt, I am willing to get a book from the library to try and finish a series. Also, if I have an arc, they are almost all certainly, I think all of them except for one is due in November or December. <laughs> Two of them the first week of November. So I will be including arcs as well. So I will be prioritizing arcs and series as well as books that I own in person. I also logged using the library Google Sheets that I believe Elle came up with to see the ebooks and audiobooks that I own on my phone in order to get these prompts. If you want that, I will also link that guide below. So let's get into it. Um, this will include the first 21 prompts, I believe, because three of them are surprise boss ba or surprise battle prompts. Two of them are mini battles and one of them is the final boss battle. I will be using a magical feather as a, my weapon. My strength is that I like big books and I cannot lie and my weakness is that I use books instead of going to therapy. So let's get into it. The first prompt is the shortest book that I own. So I picked Dear Diary by M.B. Feeney. That is an ebook. I will list the pages in the little pop-up here, I think it was around 60 to 80 pages, so that one I don't know anything about it and I don't remember how I got it, so it must have been a free giveaway. I guess I'll be getting that off my list. What else? Prompt 2 is a book that has been on my shelf the longest. For this one, I picked Evermore by Allison Noel. 
I do not know anything about this book either, but I have the entire series that was gifted to me by my aunt when I believe I was still in a high school. So this book came out in 2008 and I've never read it. I have seen iffy readings about it, so I'm not, I don't have high hopes, and but I do have high hopes then that if I don't like it, at least I'll have space on my bookshelf for a better book. Prompt three is Found Family. For this one, I will be reading Send Me Their Souls, which I have as an e-arc. This one is by Sarah Wolf, and I got this arc from NetGalley. It is due November 8th, so I will be reading that as my first book in this challenge. Send Me Their Souls is the third book in the series Bring Me Their Hearts, which I got that series as a gift for my birthday from my best friend Jamie because she said I look like the girl on the cover. I was a little hesitant because I didn't know anything about the series, but I loved it. And so to Sarah Wolf and Entangled Teen, thank you so much for this arc. Prompt four is with an animal. So this one is kind of a mythological creatures animal. I'm going to read Heart of Flames by Nikki Palpreto. That is the sequel to Crown of Feathers. I was supposed to read this last month when I did the Phoenix Writers Readathon based on this series, but I never made it to that prompt. I don't own the book, but the library does have it in an ebook or an audiobook, so I will figure out which one of those to read if I can get either one of them in November. Let's see, or December, I guess. Now, this prompt for prompt five is, I'll, I do have something to say about prompt five first though. In my wrap up video, which I will be posting next week, I did not read very much for October. The goal was 12 books and I did not get close to 12 books. So I did take a penalty roll, which I rolled on camera, and I will roll that now. All right, let's see what we get. And we have a two. My penalty roll number was two, I believe, and it was to read an intimidating book, which works perfectly because prompt five is an intimidating book. <laughs> Thanks, guys. For prompt five intimidating book, I will be reading Black Buck by Mateo Ascaripor. And this one is also an arc I need to have finished by November 9th. I got this arc from Bookish First and from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. So thank you guys so much for this arc. I will get on reading this as soon as I possibly can. I don't really know much about this. I've only read the first few chapters but it is supposed to be inspired by or similar to Wolf of Wall Street. So I am intimidated by this book because I hated Wolf of Wall Street. The only good thing in my opinion about Wolf of Wall Street was that it introduced me to my favorite actress, Margot Robbie. But I read this excerpt and it was so crazy that I really wanted to know what happened next. And I wasn't expecting to win, but I am grateful because I'm going to read it. I don't really DNF books unless they're the absolute worst. So I am excited to read about it. There won't really be synop like summaries of these books because I don't really know what a lot of these books are. But I will tell you guys about them in a non-spoiler way as I go throughout the month. Prompt 6 is a scary book, so I picked Verity, although I think it's just a psychological thriller. To me, that is scary. It is an unreliable narrator trope, which is also scary to me. So I am excited to read that. It is by Colleen Hoover, and I have it as an audiobook. I have been trying to read this for over a year, and I wanted to wait for Halloween. Well, now it's Halloween, and I didn't get to it in October. So we're going to do it in November. It's just a little past Halloween. Prompt 7 is a free choice. So I picked Notorious by Minerva Spencer. That is also an arc, an e-arc 
from NetGalley and I will list the publisher as well. I don't have that with me. But thank you guys so much for this arc. I read a snippet on Bookish first before I entered the raffle and I ended up getting it from NetGalley as a request because it was so good that I needed the next chapter. And I'm so grateful that I get to read it. It's a historical fiction. I know the main characters names are Drusilla and Gabriel. It seems kind of like a potential enemies to lovers. Definitely um, very multifaceted characters and a lot of mysteries and secrets even in the first few chapters. So I'm really excited to get to that one. I have until December 4th. So uh, Prompt 8 is a fantasy book. For this one I am reading Ignite Me which is book 3 in the Shatter Me series by Tahira Mafi. That has been one of my favorite series this year, you guys, and I am pumped to finally read this because I've been pushing it off quite a lot and trying to read the little novellas in between the books. But we got to a really good part, and it's been a few months since I read the second book, uh, Fracture Me, maybe? And I'm very excited. So I will be getting that one from the library, hopefully as an audiobook, because that's how I got the first two, and I love the narrator. Let's see what we have next. Prompt 9 is most expensive book. So for this one, I ended up pushing a book from my October TBR that I am only, I've barely started it, guys. It's a thousand pages. And that is Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon. This is book two in the Outlander series. So let's see where... I don't really understand what's going on with this book. There are past and present timelines about the main character Claire being uh, in France in the past and the in the present like 20 years later from the book. So that's definitely throwing me because then they're back in Scotland. So I, I'm i enjoying it so far. I've only read the first 100 pages, so that's like 10% of the way through. But it's definitely confusing, and I've heard from some people that this is the worst Outlander book, so I'm just trying to get through it at this point, and maybe I'll enjoy it a little later on. So this is from the library, but it is more expensive than any of the books that I own. It is 35 US dollars. Okay, sorry, I got a call. <laughs> Um, prompt 10 is a pretty cover. So for this one, I will be reading Rebecca, which is a book that my best friend Jamie picked out for us from our mutual Goodreads shelves. That one we will be reading together around mid-November. I know absolutely nothing about it, and I don't remember adding it to my TBR list. But I guess they just made a, an adaptation of it, I think, on Netflix that has um, Lily James in it. So the cover is pretty. I mean, Lily James is pretty, so it works. You know, we're just going to stretch that a little. The next prompt, prompt 11, is a magical book. For this one, I will be doing another buddy read with my other best friend, Amber. We will be reading Avatar The Last Airbender, The Promise, Part 1, which is a graphic novel that is set after the ending of Avatar The Last Airbender, the TV show. So I already read the second book, Part 1, on accident because I thought The Search was the first part, but I guess The Promise is. So <laughs> we're going to read that one. I think in November. It's only like 70 pages or 75 pages or so. Uh, prompt 12 is a book with a blue or a water theme. So for that one, I will be reading a book that I picked up at a used bookstore near my college that is A Complaint Free World. If you see here, we have the earth on some water, so I think it counts, right? I, let's see, A Complaint Free World is an engaging, enjoyable, easy re to read reminder that the only permanent constructive changes you can make in the world are the changes that you make in yourself. That's all I know about the book. So it sounds pretty nice. November is a month to be grateful, you know, attitude, gratitude and all that. So I thought it would be a good time to read it. Prompt. 13 is a character you want to fight. This one will be a buddy read with my brother Noah. It is, I think, a manga. 
I've never read manga. I picked two books off of his Clear Your Shit Readathon TBR for us to buddy read that were not sequels. And I don't know anything about either one of these books. So I may be pleasantly or surprised or horrified, depending on if I even like manga. I don't know that I've ever read a manga before. This one is called, Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? That's all that I know. My brother says that the title is misleading. And I imagine someone who goes to a dungeon to pick up girls I would want to fight. Again, th that could be misleading, but Noah told me he has seen like the TV show or s the anime that it is based off of this. And he said I would want to fight the main character. So that works for me. Prompt 14 is recommended or gifted. I really should have written the numbers down because I feel like I'm reading you guys the wrong one. So just, just pretend. <laughs> so anyway, prompt 14 is recommended or gifted. So for this one, I am reading a book that my madre got me a couple of years ago for Christmas. It is called Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. I know that it is a self-help book. There's a tagline on the front that says, stop believing the lies about who you are so you can become who you were meant to be. Again, so November, I'm looking at kind of just like stretching out my genres and not just reading like young adult fantasy. So this also seemed like it might be good for a kind of like attitude gratitude November. So I have that one. And it seems like it'll be a short read too, which is cool. I haven't read anything else by Rachel Hollis, but I know she has more if I like that one. Um, prompt one, two, three, four, five. Prompt 15 is a book you don't remember. So for this one, I will be reading a book called Sugar and Spice by Lauren Conrad, which I also got at a used bookstore near my college. And this one, I know nothing about it at all. I like Lauren Conrad. I follow her on Instagram. I love her cl clothing line. Okay, so it looks like it's actually a fiction novel, which I know, I think she's done some nonfiction ones as well, so I wasn't sure. Um, I'll just read the first sentence. It says, sugar and spice, not everyone's nice, fresh from being betrayed by one of her closest friends, new reality television celebrity Jane Roberts has learned a few lessons. Most important, know who to trust, and in Hollywood, that list is short. So is this based off of that one show that she was on that I never saw? It's not 90210. It's like The Hills or something. Is this like inspired by that? I don't love like things that are based in Hollywood. So that'll be fun. I can get rid of it if it's bad at least. <laughs> oh boy. Prompt 16 is a free choice. So for this one, I will, I will be reading How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. This, I don't really know anything about that either. I think that it may be an arranged marriage, an arranged marriage plot, which I am really into that, but I'm not 100% sure that that's actually what this is about at all. And I have that as an e-arc that is due January 26th from NetGalley. So thank you to NetGalley and the publishers for that copy. But I also won my first Goodreads giveaway and I'm getting a copy of it physically in the mail at, at some point. They were like, if it doesn't get to you in like 12 weeks, contact us. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. <laughs> but I look forward to reading that in whatever format I end up reading it in November or December. That was 16, I think. So prompt 17 is a book with a map, which I will be reading a book that I got as a pre-order from Shelby Maharan. This is Blood and Honey, the sequel to Serpent and Dove. This is an arranged marriage plot as well. And it is it has almost all of my, I think all of my favorite tropes. It's got that, it has slow burn, it has uh, enemies to lovers, found family. It was a great book. I was very surprised by how much I loved it and because I just picked it up randomly as a suggestion. This one does have a map in it. It is a map of Belterra, which I believe is not on Earth, but this is not our Earth, but it is inspired by a uh, past France, 
I think. But I'm very excited to find out what happened to Reed and Lou from the last book. And I really hope I actually get to this book because it always goes in the bottom of my TBR and then I don't get to it. And I really just want to read it. So hopefully we can do it, guys. Um, prompt 18. Yeah, prompt 18 is the oldest publication that I have. This one I am cheating a little. I have most of or all of the Trixie Belden series. And they did come out in the uh, 50s. This one is the hardcover, which came out and I think I think I just read 2003, but the series itself was published in 19, or at least this book was published in 1950, which is the oldest book that I own. Um, so I will be reading this. It is Trixie Belding number two, The Red Trailer Mystery. I have read this before as a kid, but I really don't remember almost anything that happens or if I ever finish the series. So, yes, but I am very excited to read it. You can see I have this little ice cream sticker from uh, Lisa, Lisa Frank. I used to just put these on everything. <laughs> oh, that's a throwback. Oh, man, I will not be getting rid of that series. I got it from my grandmother, and I will keep it and give it to my children or nieces. And um, Prompt 19 is a pre-order. Oh, no, you guys... I can't show it to you because it's keeping my camera in a stack and I, it took me a really long time to get the camera where I wanted it. So I'll show it to you guys next week. <laughs> that one is Lobizona by Romina Garber. That book is the first in her series. I think it's just called Lobizona. And I know that it involves an Argentinian myth about a seventh son or daughter and I am... That's all that I can remember. Um, I think it follows an undocumented immigrant who is in the United States, and I think I want is Lobizona a noun? I want to say she is a Lobizona, but I, I, it's kind of like a werewolf. It would be like the American, the American idea of a werewolf, from what I remember. We actually got to chat with Romina Garber in my book club. Uh, words and whimsy and she was telling us about the series but oh god that was back in August or September and I really it's been a while it's been like blood and honey where I pre-ordered it and then I put it on my TBR list and it's always at the end and I never get to it so hopefully I get to that one this month as well but it's also on the very end <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm so sorry Romina I really want to read this book <laughs> um prompt night no prompt 20 is a shiny cover or a magical object. I will be bre Ugh, I will be buddy reading that with my brother Noah. It's called Noragami. Oh, I think it's called I think it was actually called Noragami Stray God. And Noah said that he has a a, a sword that is shiny slash magical. I don't know what constitutes Noragami or the, whoever the main character is as being a stray god but it seems like he was almost it said something like god for hire like the citizens could hire him to do things for them so I don't know if he's like a god from a lost civilization or what I don't I don't know anything I think he said it was a manga as well so I will be reading that with him um, probably in December and the last book here we have prompt 21 that is a free choice and I picked Surrender by Mary Lee McDonald. That is an arc that I won as a physical copy from net no 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 from Bookish First and that should be arriving. I think they said that it shipped out on the 26th or the 27th. It was on a Monday. And so I will read need to read that within 3 weeks of it arriving on my doorstep. So thank you so much to Bookish First and the publishers for this as well. I do know a little bit about this book because I just read the excerpt on Monday. It is a memoir about Mary Lee McDonald. She was adopted herself when she was only a few days old. And then she grew up in a very strict Catholic family. So when she got pregnant as a teenager at 
15 or 16, they sent her away to um, like a home for girls that are pregnant. So then when she had the baby, I think she didn't even get to hold him. And then they immediately had her um, surrender her rights. Yeah, surrender. <laughs> I was gonna, yeah. So she surrendered her rights and gave the baby away. And that baby was given in a closed adoption to another family. So the kicker, you know, she was adopted and then had to adopt her own child out. But the father, the birth father, she ended up marrying him two years later. And they went on to have like three more kids that were this little boy's full brother. And the birth father never wanted to meet the son or like talk about him. They just kind of wanted, he wanted to pretend that life was normal with their three kids that they already had. So then when her husband died, she decided that she wanted to go and find her son, but the adoptive mother wouldn't give her any information and hadn't heard of from him in years. So she had to pay this guy like $10,000 cash in this like super sketchy situation up front to get a name and contact number for her biological son. And this story is kind of about like all of the emotions and the history about how all of these stages happened, at least I think, because that's pretty much where it ended up. Uh, we like fast forwarded to the present and her moving back to where he was born. I was really enthralled. I'm really interested to read that. And you can tell as I've told you way more about that book than any other book that I've gone on about. <laughs> so those are the first 21 prompts. Like I said, the next two will be, I think, like week two and week four or something like that of surprise, um, surprise battles with like little monsters or whatever. And then prompt 24 will be a boss battle. So I'm wondering, will it be something that's more difficult to complete, like a over 500 pages book or something crazy like that so but I'm really impressed with this readathon it has so much work put into it their announcement video had like a special guest voice for the narrator character I'm really getting like D&D &D dungeon master vibes here and I'm loving it I have no idea what the three prompts will be but I would love to fit in Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Wow, that actually super goes with my costume. I'm loving that. Red's my favorite color, like the specific shade of red, like with my nails too. <laughs> but I'm super pumped to read Vicious. Um, I get one book a month, and if you guys watch my weekly vlogs, you probably heard me ramble about how I had a weird dream that I needed to read this book, even though like I hadn't... I don't know why. It was really out of the blue. So I bought it as my... October book of the month and I would really love to get to read it soon maybe in December it's very festive colored if you ignore all the skulls <laughs> I am looking at the Thousand Doors readathon which goes up tonight I think at midnight and I will read the first prompt and see if the books that I'm reading fit that but otherwise clear your shit readathon will be the only one that I am taking part in this month because Michael will be coming home very, very, very soon. And uh, yeah, I will, I assume want to spend a lot of time with him because I haven't seen him since winter <laughs> before coronavirus happened. It was a different, it was a different lifetime since I've seen Michael. <laughs> That will be it for our November, December TBR list readathons. Um, if you liked it, please feel free to give it a like or a comment below. Tell me what you guys are going to be reading in November, uh, what readathons you guys are taking part in on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads. I think that's a thing. <laughs> and feel free to subscribe if you want to see my weekly progress on how I'm liking these books and what I end up reading them, what the prompts end up being. And then I also post some miscellaneous things just like me unboxing my packages and um, weekly vlogs about my life and Caroline's life, my Labrador. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hope you have a wonderful month.